Hi guys, it's Cherie. I'm here with the much anticipated kombucha video. Um, I'm gonna try and keep this brief because I do tend to drag on uh, and I want you guys to really focus on the method that I use instead of all the things that I could just tell you. I will leave all the links down below. Um, I'll leave a link for health benefits of kombucha, um, some instructional videos that I found helpful when starting my kombucha brewing journey, um, and just, uh, oh, and a list of um, Amazon links where you can get the things that you need to make kombucha. I highly suggest that if you are new to kombucha, you make sure you drink a couple of store-bought brands first uh, because you don't want to buy all this stuff to brew it at home if you don't end up liking it. Um, I will say it is an acquired taste. It has, it's a vinegary fermented tea, so if it ferments too long, it can be really vinegary. Um, and it starts out with a lot of sugar, but the sugar is eaten by the SCOBY, so it's te it's technically pretty much sugar-free, uh, but you do use a lot of sugar to start with. Um, so yeah, <laughs> kombucha is weird. So I started drinking kombucha because my body does not tolerate probiotics, so I'm trying to eat more probiotic rich foods to give me those happy gut probiotic delightfulnesses um, without overloading my system, which is what regular ones do to me personally. Um, I find them very delightful and bubbly. I think they're a great replacement for sodas and stuff like that. If you ferment, if you second ferment them, they get nice and bubbly and um, carbonated and soda-like. I, I, I season. I flavor mine with fruit, so they're a little bit fruity. Um, I think they're delicious. My husband thinks they're disgusting, so it's definitely just an acquired taste. Um, you do need a SCOBY. Um, you cannot make kombucha without one. You can grow your own SCOBY, but I personally have never done it. I'm lazy and I want what I want when I want it. So I ended up having a friend who brews who gave me a SCOBY to start mine, which is super cool if you have friends who do SCOBYs. Um, just ask them if you can have one to start your little colony of, of fermentation. If not, I will leave a link down below and you guys can go and get your own SCOBY from Amazon. I think they're like seven bucks. Um, and they're just little squishy, mm, scary looking sci-fi snail juice things that make delicious tea. So you cannot have this, or you cannot start this uh, process without one. So if you're gonna grow one, um, I suggest looking on YouTube. I don't know how to do that, so I'm not gonna, that's not what this video is about. Um, but I, you know, I'm all about that lazy life. So just go buy you a SCOBY. Also to note, I do the continuous brew method which is basically the same as any other method except for I just use one canister. You can get these, I got my canisters at Walmart for $10. Um, make sure they're glass. You can use plastic, but glass I just feel like is a little bit thicker and more hardy. Um, you don't wanna use metal, so don't, I mean, I used to use a metal ladle, but really you should use plastic. Uh, metal just kinda interacts with it. Uh, I mean, I didn't notice any negativities, but if it sits in metal, um, it does something to the brew, so, and it can also erode the metal. So just don't use metal if you can avoid it. Um, I suggest you do the continuous brew method because I was doing it with just a one gallon jar and then I graduated to two one gallon jars and it's just a big mess. You have to have like a ladle, you have to have a little sieve thing, you have to like pour it out. It's just a huge mess and it takes forever. If you do continuous brew where it's just in one vessel, it's super easy and you don't have to have any cleanup. So I don't have to strain anything. I don't have to, you know, pull out all this different stuff. It's just so easy to do continuous brew. But if you do not have a continuous brew system um, to start with, it's it's completely fine to use a big, large jar. Um, it's just gonna be a little bit more messy and it won't be the method you see in this video. Sorry I'm all over the place. This is why I don't film these kind of videos is because it's really hard for me to explain things. So I'm just gonna jump into it so you guys can see what I do and please leave any questions you have down below and I will certainly answer them or direct you in a direction of where to get that answer. Um, so yeah, don't forget to check out the down bar because all of the pertinent information will be there and let's jump into this video. All right, so the first thing you're gonna need is a one gallon glass jar or pitcher. You can also get the ones with a little spigot on it if you want to do continuous brew, but in a smaller batch, you're going to need some tea, some black tea, tea bags, and some white sugar. Um, you're also going to need a SCOBY, and you're gonna need about a cup of, um, of tea that was previously brewed. So you can get that from a friend, or you can buy a plain flavor from the store. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is 
show you this glass jar. It's just so beautiful. Um, you need one cup of sugar per gallon of tea, but since I am brewing a strong batch for my two gallon pitcher, I'm putting two cups in. Um, so if you are doing just the jar, one gallon jar, just one cup of sugar will be fine, but I'm doing a double batch. So double, double, double. And you're gonna need some tea. I do eight to 10 tea bags per gallon. Since I am doing two gallons, I think I did 16 tea bags, but if you were doing just one, you only need eight to 10. Probably start with eight, and then if you don't find that strong enough for you, you can pop it up to 10. And I just take these and gather them all together into a nice little bunch. And then I cut the paper off. You don't want that to be soaking in your tea. It just kind of gives it a, I don't know, I don't know, paper and metal, just cut that off. You don't need it. And then I just very carefully um, tie it in a knot that just makes it easier to get out later. And it also uh, reduces the chance that you're gonna bust a tea bag because if you get tea grinds in your tea, you're gonna have to start over again. Um, it just can mess with the ferment, so. So tie it all together, just makes life easy. And then we're gonna have a little banana snack and we're gonna boil some water. I don't know exactly how much this is. I think it's two quarts, but just as long as it's half of your container of hot water, you're just gonna use this to melt your sugar down and you're gonna use it to steep your tea, but you don't wanna fill up the jar with hot water because it'll take longer to cool down and you can't put your scoby in until your tea is cool. So this is just a quicker way to do it. So I'm gonna stir it until it's all disintegrated. And then I will put my tea bag bunch down in there for some steepage. And that's just, it's just important that it's not hot when you put your scoby in because it will kill your scoby. So you have to make sure that it's room temperature or just a little bit above um, so this is why I only do it in a half batch. It just takes it less long to cool down. So we're gonna just steepy, steepy, steep it. And I just kind of stick it in there to get them all incorporated and then I leave it alone. You're just gonna walk away, let it brew, let it cool, kind of let it hang out. Um, I'd say about an hour maybe. I just kind of eyeball it. I just kind of, sometimes I forget about it and it's longer, just it needs to be cooled down. So this is sometime later, it's really dark super, super brewy. So you're just making a really strong base tea um, with the sugar and super dark. And just pull your tea bags out really gently. And then I usually just kind of a little bit press them against the jar. And then I put them on a plate to cool before I throw them into the garbage can. Safety first. And then I'm gonna pop this lid on because it's good to keep critters out. You do not want any fruit flies or any critters in your tea. You will have to start again. So I just leave that alone for a couple hours. And then I fill it up with tap water this is cold tap water. I know it's from a teapot, but I just couldn't fit it under my sink. Um, so you just fill it up the rest of the way. This will just sort of make the tea less strong. It'll also cool it down. So your SCOBY can happily swim in there. And of course it won't be this dark if you're doing just one gallon brew, but I'm doing again, a double batch. So that's why it's still super dark even when I've watered it down. And then we're gonna leave that, um, oh, I do a finger test just to see how warm it is. Um, Cause yeah, you just don't wanna kill your scoby. Don't murder it. And then I just leave it sitting there again for another hour or so, let it hang out. And now it's time to make my tea. All right, so I have my reserved liquid from my last batch. You cannot make kombucha without your scoby and some starter liquid. So I've got 25% about of my last batch. And then I'm just gonna pour this on top of that and add some more water. That's why I love the continuous brew method is you don't have to strain anything. You don't have to touch the SCOBY and like put your hands all in it, which can, you know, always introduce more bacteria. Um, so I just plop this in there and I fill it up the rest of the way with just plain tap water. If you do not have a continuous brew system, um, all you would do is when, you're wa when your tea has cooled down, just pour your reserved liquid from your last batch of kombucha or your store-bought kombucha and then put your SCOBY in and then put the lid on um, this just keeps you from having to do all those steps. You just pour it all into one vessel. Super easy. I'm just adding some more water to fill it up. And then you're gonna wanna put your cheesecloth on the top. And your SCOBY might not float to the top every time. That's totally fine. You know, it swims and finds its perfect position. Um, but you wanna make sure you keep buggies out of here. Any bugs, fruit flies, regular flies, they love this stuff because it smells sort of vinegary. So just make sure it's tight. I use a rubber band and cheesecloth, but you can use an old t-shirt, whatever. Just make sure the buggies stay out. And then you wanna put it in the warmest place of your house. Mine is my guest room. So I leave it here for seven days for the first ferment. Uh, this will get it nice and vinegary-like and the SCOBY will eat all the sugar. 
Uh, so I just let it hang out in my guest room for seven days. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. Um, I will have my second part of this, which is the second fermentation video live next week. Um, I will also put these into a playlist on our main page. So it'll be easy for you to find if you need directions. I like to watch videos while I'm doing stuff so I can pause it, do the method, pause it. Um, but yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down below if you have any questions and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.